Bars, pubs, saloons, whatever you call these Carbondale establishments, they provide a unique opportunity. 19 to party, 21 to drink. But does 21 always mean 21? For more than 200 busted and countless others who may get away with it, the answer is no. I mean, definitely underage drinking is something that's it's really easy to do from experience. That's how many students feel. It's too easy to get in. That minors drink with relative ease at Carbondale pubs. I mean, it doesn't matter if they don't really check your ID that much. Bar owners disagree. We just make sure that they check IDs. Uh, our doorman, when we have them working on the, you know, the busy nights, uh, they're out front, they're carding everybody. They won't say that they're perfect. Every bar in the state will occasionally, you know, mess up. But they do say they try their best to keep the law inside their taverns. If you're ever not sure, even if they have an overstamp, something just seems off, you know, go ahead and check them. Evening Edition obtained police records documenting offenses at Carbondale bars from August until March. Offenses included underage drinking and fake IDs. Carbondale police alone issued 14 tickets at Gatsby's, 21 at Sidetrax, 31 at Sticks, 61 at Cali's, and 80 tickets in just over six months at Pinch. That's over 200 total. All bars except Sidetrax declined an on-air interview. Why are the numbers so high? Students have their opinion. Bartenders, I think it's more about is uh, they're either too busy to check or brings in business. But Woodruff is pleased with how his employees deal with the issue. I'm very proud about the fact that we're one of the lowest, if not the lowest, you know, as far as underage tickets. Uh, Especially compared to other bars. I don't know how they run their thing, so I can't really speak on it. I know in the past, you know, cer you know certain places have had a very uh, open-minded way of thinking about letting people in as far as bringing money and they didn't care who they were. With a great college population and three bike shops within feet of each other, Carbonale is the bike capital of Southern Illinois. A heaven for those on two wheels. Well, not always. It's way too easy for, for people out there to get hurt right now. And that's just not fair. And it's just, it's, uh, it's inhumane. Yeah. Carbondale resident Mike Sachs is one of many cyclists frustrated with the amount of bike lanes and the overall lack of bike friendliness in the city. For instance, if you want to go to the post office or the mall or the movies, it's really dangerous to ride your bike there. Sachs and fellow biker Katie yeah, Lenza do have a point. Poplar Street is one of the few clearly marked Carbondale roads that has lines designating where bikes can ride. US 51 and Illinois Route 13 have no designations. This is what it's like to ride down Highway 13, right near where many students live. When I rode my bike on it, legally, all the way to the right edge, I was still almost knocked over by cars. I'm here on Chautauqua Avenue, right near the SIU campus. Now, Chautauqua is one of multiple Carbondale streets that has a sign designating it as a bike route, but no white lines actually saying where bikes should ride and Chautauqua is just as narrow and dangerous as both 13 and 51. Sachs would like changes made and has a good reason. I, I've been clipped from behind, you know, like, and that was because the car invaded like my very little space that I already have on the road. The people making these decisions, is the administration, uh, to be responsible, they we're feeling their dis the effects of their decisions. With bullhorn in hand and emotion in heart, Harag R. Kellyan let those in front of Morris Library know what he and his fellow students want. As administrators brace for a 10% budget decrease, students ask those making the decisions to look in the mirror when money gets tight. The, the budget cuts need to first happen from the top down. R. Kellyan says that although it's the administrators who will have to make the decisions, in the end, it is the common man who will bear most of the brunt. The people from the school working jobs, they're the ones being affected. While protesters are angry with Pichard and the administration, the SIU president told Evening Edition that the group may end up getting what they want. Well, whatever the, other the rest of the people are asked to do, campus administrators and the system administrators will be asked to do the same thing. Ultimately, R. Kalian turned to those he says will be affected to make the difference. And for all the students that are sitting back saying it's not going to affect me, don't wait till it does because you're not going to have a job. You're not going to be able to pay off your loans afterwards. You're just screwing yourselves. So stand up and have a voice.